I'm currently sitting in my car, parked on the street from a restaurant after having had the most terrifying experience of my life. I'll do my best to describe with as much clarity as possible the absolute freaking nightmare that just transpired inside the burger place. I'm still really shaken up by what happened, so forgive me if I gloss over certain things. My brain is still trying to process the dark unreality of it all. Earlier in the night, I had been sitting at home, hungry and bored, a terrible combination. So I drove to a nearby fast food restaurant for a 2am burger and fries. It wasn't the first time that I had done that, but it might be the last. I went in, placed my order, and stood a few places away from the counter to await my food. A few moments later, I heard a weird whooshing sound, like flags being battered by the wind, and saw a dark shape move with incredible speed outside the front of the restaurant. A few seconds later, the front doors were thrown open, and a thing out of some ultra-cosmic nightmare walked into the restaurant. I say walked, but really, the thing sort of hovered in. There were no feet to be seen. Its body was encased in this shadowy, cloud-like substance or aura, from which blue sparks issued and fizzled at random. Appendages, whether they were arms or legs I cannot say, hung limply from the cloud-enshrouded body, and a lofty, conoid projection, presumably the head, sat atop the cloud form. Eyes, or at least, dark orbs which resembled eyes, were situated all around the cephalic like projection, and several bulbous purple skin nodes served possibly as in human ears, or were the apparatuses of some other less fathomable sense. Obviously, I pulled out my phone, after recovering from the initial shock of the monstrous sight, but when I turned on my camera, all I saw on the screen was darkness. Nothing of the strangeness before me was detected by my phone's camera. And glancing to my left toward the counter, I saw an expression of disappointment on the face of one of the cashiers, also holding her phone, and I knew then that her phone was similarly affected. Apparently heedless of our attempts to capture it on video, the creature approached the counter, but rather than smash it to pieces, or attempt to ensnare the people behind it, the creature stopped a few inches away from the surface and angled that columnial head structure toward the menu board above. In a display of breath-stealing grotesqueness, the head remained still, while the ocular orbs situated around it moved. Instead, some orbited the head, others sunk inward or ballooned outward. It was in this manner that the thing scanned the items displayed on the broad menu. The scene was horrific, unwholesome, an exhibition of sight and analysis wholly alien to human behavior. And then out of nowhere, I heard a voice, and I knew at once by its guttural yet machine-like tones that it belonged to the abysmal patron. All right, all right. Place a normal human order. Pay and get out of here. No need to attract any special attention. Just be cool, Black Narok. You can do this. These words were not spoken by any mouth that I could see. Weren't transmitted audibly. I heard them in my head. As if they had been broadcasted into my skull along with some psychic channel. I saw the restaurant workers flinch the voice having been transmitted directly to their brains as well. The creature, who had called itself Blagnarok, continued its examination of the menu, wholly ignorant to the fact that its thoughts had just been broadcasted to the other occupants of the building. In a voice that was like the full-speed collision of two semi-trucks, including the agonized screams of those trapped in the subsequent highway catastrophe, the creature voiced its order to the cashier, with no obvious organ of speech. Though the clot about its body did shift, 
as if to allow for the passage of sound waves through it. Yeah, um, can I get, uh, let's see, um, four, no, no, six of those triple bacon cheeseburgers. And could I have the fries be dipped in cheese? Yeah, just the whole batch dunked in a vat of cheese, if possible. And then I'll have, uh, let's go with a modest 200 chicken nuggets. And give me about 30 of those little barbecue sauce containers. No, no, wait. I'll have the honey mustard instead. Thank you. And I'm not doing anything tomorrow, so... I guess I'll have 10 of your mini tacos. The chicken ones, please. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be it. Wait, no, Black Narok. That wasn't a normal order. Who orders food without a drink? Do you want them to think that you're weird? Do you want them to start suspecting things? Think, Black Narok, think. Oh, and, uh, a uh, diet cola, please. Good save, Blog. Nice. Soon they'll call you Black Narok, wearer of human skin. Or maybe something even cooler. The cashier's mouth was now agape, as were the mouths of her co workers. I felt the desperate urge to get them to play along lest we all suffer some awful fate at the hands of this morphologically unimagined creature. I gestured broadly and openly towards them, concealed from Black's bizarrely oriented sight due to the collective focus of its freely moving eyes upon the little shelves of cookies on the counter. The cashiers, noticing my gestures and understanding their intent, assumed faces and postures of a slightly rigid casualness, with great reluctance. Hmm, do I deserve a cookie? I did soar here from the Garden of Outer Time, and I am participating in that community swim through that Everblack Channel of Souls on Tuesday. Nah, nah, not tonight. You stick to your diet, Black. You can almost fit into your old planet shell. Don't quit now. The eye orbs then focused at once upon the face of the cashier, and I briefly feared she would scream out in terror. But impressively, she kept her cool, kept her bewilderment and fear in check. That'll be, um, $216.37. The dark nimbus around Blagnarok shifted, the arcs of electricity surging intensely for a moment, and then an object was violently launched from the middle of the mass. It landed wetly atop the counter, and squirmed there for several moments before finally, fatally assuming a state of morbid immobility. The cashier's eyes went wide, and I watched as one of the other workers collapsed from the sheer frightfulness of the situation. On the counter was a mass of what appeared to be bones, connected by oily and pink tissue. In addition to the bones, there were the corpses of ugly black, alarmingly large critters, what might have been the common insects of some prehistoric age, or a hypogeobiome attached to the mass by a brown, mucus-like substance. Blagnarok looked from the cashier to the counter, and then its cloud cloak shifted and surged again. Blag, you idiot. They need human money, the papery stuff. They probably can't make change for a cache of condemned condensed flash, anyway. Sorry, I, uh, was just at the thing, uh, the casino. I forgot to exchange my chips. Naha. <laughs> the mass, the cash was then reabsorbed back into Black's body by the cloud, which had briefly expanded to envelop half the counter in a mere second. A fat wad of cash was then launched, landing in the oily puddle left by the cash. The cashier took the stained money with a trembling hand, counted out what was owed, and returned the rest to the counter. This was incorporated back into Blagnarok's body in the same aforementioned manner of cloud extension and absorption. She told him it 
that his order would be ready soon, and he politely thanked her. Stunned, barely holding on to my sanity, I stepped a little further away so as to allow Blagnarok to pass. It hovered by me, and I caught off whiff of the foulest, most putrid scent I had ever smelled. The thing reeked of death, decay, and moldy cheese, emitted a stench so powerfully offensive that I briefly considered forsaking my order and leaving the store. But I was terribly hungry, and I had already paid, so I stayed. Blagorok went to the dining area, examined the area in its monstrous and multi-eyed way, and eventually went on to hover above the seat of a booth in the very back. Once settled, he began to reflect on his day, in his head of course, and I can't bring myself to repeat, even vaguely, the awful atrocities and hyper-violent reveries he recalled and reimagined as he waited for his bounty of food. Horrified, repulsed, I sat down at a table, far away from the ruminating horror, to give my trembling knees a break. Perhaps fifteen minutes later, a parade of workers exited the kitchen, each bearing a tray loaded with food. They all looked exhausted, their uniforms stained with liquid cheese and sweat. Four passed by my table, but the fist stopped and laid a strain in front of me. I thanked him, and he absentmindedly responded, uh, You're welcome, while fearfully eyeing the creature across the room. The workers deposited their trays on the three tables, which Blagnarok had drawn toward himself, and then laughed unscathed and they practically fought against each other to get back into the kitchen, where I'm sure they shared a sigh, and maybe even a few tears of immense relief. Just as I was about to bite into my burger, poorly assembled, but that was understandable, I received yet another psychically shared transmission. Wow, look at that guy's tray. Poor dude, must be broke. That's terrible. What is it that humans are always saying? Be charitable and generous. All right, Blag. Now's your chance to prove without a doubt that you're one of them. Give him some of your food. He'll think to himself, Wow, what a kind and completely normal human. Yeah, this'll do it for sure. Instinctively turning around, at the first reference to my presence, I saw one of the overloaded trays lift off from the table and hover in midair for a moment before my brain was blasted with yet another transmission. No, humans can't control things with their minds. They only have the one, and they use it to do other things, like sing songs to themselves and reminisce fondly on their most embarrassing moments. No, Blog, give it to him with an arm, like a proper human. The tray wobbled and then fell to the table, and a black, shadow fringe tentacle emerged from the cloud cloak. The handless appendage flailed around for a moment before steadying itself, and then it seized the tray. And then from across the room, a distance of at least 30 feet, the tray was brought to me by that apparently limitless tentacle. It set the tray next to mine, and was then drawn back into Blagnarok's body, like the cord of a vacuum returning to the chassis. The retracted limb had left a thin, slimy sheen on the tray and a few of the chicken tacos. The affected tacos seemed to dissolve right before my eyes, as if glazed or sprayed with some highly caustic element. Blagnarok's eyes now focused on me, blinked rapidly, uncannily, and I interpreted this terrifying performance as an expression of good cheer, like that of a friendly stranger smiling to you from across the bar after having sent a pitcher of beer to your table. In response, I gave the entity a meek thumbs up, and after a few seconds more of that unsettling eye flashing, it turned its attention to the food-laden trays beneath it. With no further thoughts, Blagnarok began eating. The clot again shifted, now becoming a purple, typhonic cyclone, into which food was drawn at random. Burgers, fries, and nuggets and tacos were all sucked into the torrential vortex. All of the items over $200 worth of food were consumed within a few seconds. Once the trays were clear, 
Blagnarok casually sipped at its soda, an action facilitated by a slightly less chaotic suctioning. Drop by drop, the beverage was drawn into the whirling cloud. Beyond disturbed, I only managed to eat a few fries and take a few bites of my burger before feeling full. Not wanting to offend the horror, and potentially incur its assuredly hellish wrath. I forced myself to finish most of what it had shared with me, even these slime stained tacos, which tasted unsurprisingly awful, as if I had instead eaten layer upon layer of the yellowed, tom soiled linen of some antidevolian mummy. I then covertly deposited the rest of the meal into a nearby trash receptacle after swiftly leaving my table. Without turning toward Black, I passed by the counter, mouthed good luck to the fear-stricken workers peeking through the kitchen's little window, and I left the restaurant. As I stepped onto the parking lot, I heard one final thought transmission, and it sent me running madly across the lot to my vehicle. Ugh, I'm still so hungry. I should have ordered those cookies. Now they're taking them away for the night. What a bummer. Hmm, once I finish this drink... I'll see if that other human is still around. Maybe snack on them if they haven't left. Gotta see what organs humans can't live without first. Let me just goggle it really quick. I'm sure you can understand and even forgive my subsequent violation of virtually every traffic law as I sped away from the restaurant.